Daily Learning Channel Museum. Today, we're going to learn Music Box Dancer. With this song, we're going to learn three new things. First, very important chords, seventh chord. And the second, we're going to learn how to connect the melody lines between two hands. And the last, crossing finger techniques. Now let's see how it goes. Now, if you look at the score, the first line is literally repeating the same chord, C chord. Now, C is definitely C, E, G, most easiest chord. And the right hand, once in a while, you play it C. And if you look at the second line, it's also many C chord except the very last measure is F. What is F chord? C. But in here, after the C, F chord, instead of moving far, maybe come down to the C here and making inversions. So C to F. So this song is played within the primary chord, which is C chord, F chord, and G chord. But in here, there is a G7. So we're gonna learn that one soon. Now let's see the beginning. Left hand starts with the C chord. So which is a C, E, G, and right hand starts with the C too. So let's go slow. One, two, three, go. C, E, G, E, and right hand, C, over and over again, which is these two measures. See? But this simple chord made such a beautiful sound. So it repeats back over and over. So just practice two measures first, and when you get that measure well, then move it on to the next. Now, before we move it on, do you see it? Left hand, and it goes to right hand. So make sure that you keep holding it until you play the C, and then play G and leave it. This is the one that we're gonna learn today. Connect the melody lines between hands. If you don't pay attention to that, then you will lose the smoothness. It will be sounds like this. you connect it. So connecting melody lines between two hands, moving back and forth. Do you see it? This is really important technique. So if you know the first line, the second line will be easy too because it's the same thing. So if we move it on to the second line, the first note starts with the right hand C and left hand G. So you don't repeat the G, but you have to keep holding and left hand plays the C chord again. So C, G, 2, 1, and then the next one is G chord. So left hand goes G, 
The melody line comes, but you have to play with your left hand. So you have to play loud enough because this is melody line. See? So this is really important technique that you should remember while you're playing the song. Okay, let's move it on. C chord part. Right hand is on E and left hand is on C too. Again, treble C, F chord part. And left hand A again. This is also melody line, so you have to remember. But after you play it, keep holding it. So it goes. That's melody line, remember? And move it on to the next one. switching it so I switched it but many of you may feel comfortable stay with one finger so it should be okay just whatever you use keep use the same finger over and over don't switch it around okay now let's move it on to the G7th chord here oh but just wait that's G7th part but we're gonna learn later so let's go G to play it well. The melody line is ba, 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 ba. it has to be here as one line, not like so remember to connect the note. Connect, connect, connect. One, two, three, four. You may need to practice a couple of times to make the sound right. Now that's the first part. First part seems pretty easy, right? Compared to the last two lessons. I know the last two lessons was really, really hard. <laughs> now, you just keep practice the very beginning to up to here, part A, couple of times. And when you can play well on the melody line and right hand and left hand combinations, 
Then we'll be done to the part B. Part B is the same song, but completely different way of playing it. In part B, left hand plays the chord and right hand plays the melody line. Now in part A, the melody line shares between two hands, right hand and left hand, and keep moving. Do you see it? Like this. But in part B, this melody line will be played by right hand only. So maybe we may have to go right hand only first for part B. Now let's see. Part B starts with octave higher. So instead of letter C, it goes to treble C. So C, G, C, E, C, E, G, C, and higher C. One, two, rest. 2 and G, so switch to finger number 5 so that you can go down. Here, now if you look at the finger number, it says that 2, but the note goes down. So you have to remember you're crossing finger number 2 over the 1, like this, and coming back again. This is very important crossing finger technique that we're going to learn today. So if you see it, it seems like, but it's not. Many people play by looking at the finger number and automatically hits the D. But it's not the D, this is a G, so you have to go down. D, B, and cross it over the finger number two, smooth, and coming back again. Like this. Do you got it? So let's see like this. Make sure that you just cross it over like this. Your finger number one is a stay and two is just moving. Touching, 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 touching. So practice and then you can play it. Cross it over and coming back again. This is one of the most confusing part because of the fingering. Now the next part is and C and then the same C but change finger number two so that we can go down to G. Or from the beginning you can play it finger number two twice. It really doesn't matter this part. Decide the finger number whichever easier for you. Okay, so now let's go from the part. I will use one, two. One, C again, but don't play with finger number two, but come with one because we have to go up higher notes. So five, four, three, two. Here's also two finger numbers. You can use one, three, five, one, C. You can go that way or one, two, four, one. That both okay, so you decide whichever is good. Now the next part is G, right hand, F, D, B. Here is the same technique, crossing over, two, one, three, one, and C, G, E, C, tied. And then C again. And here crossing over. One, F, A, G, C, A, G, tie. One, two, one, and G. F, B, B. Here is again the crossing over.
now. So you need to practice part B, right hand only, then edit left hand. Now we're going to learn new chord, seventh chord. Have you ever heard seventh chord before? Seventh chord looks like this. Letter with number seven. Yes, you know what is the letter, right? Letter stands for major and minor chord. So if it's a G major, just letter G, the seventh, so G seventh chord, D seventh chord, C seventh chord. Now, what does the seventh chord mean? Seventh chord means in the basic chord, you add one more note, like this, yes. Just adding it one more note. But there is two seventh chord, so you may have to remember which one is which one. Now today we're going to learn only the one that we are most often using, minor seventh chord. Now let's see how to find the chord. C7 means first we have to find the C chord. Just letter C means C major, so C major chord. And what about the next? Letter seven stands for the seventh note. So you just draw the first the seventh note above it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can count or just draw circle above it, line to line. Got it? Then, do you remember I said there is two sevenths type, major seventh and minor seventh. Now, the major seventh is from the C chord name. So C here, top C, you come half step down. So just one half step down. Then just regular B. This is major seventh. So whenever you see the major seventh, we are going to write it like this. C major seventh. Got it? Then minor seven. One more half step down. Because always minor is one half step smaller than the major. So from C to two half steps coming down. One, two. Got it? This is C seventh chord, which we normally talking about. So whenever you see just letter with seven means adding the seventh note. But the seventh note has to be the two half step down from the letter name. Oh, it's confusing, right? Now let's see. G seventh means first you find the G chord. Where is the G chord? G, right? G major chord. And seven. You just added one more note. And then we have to think about it. Is this two half step down from the letter G? So G here, one, two. Aha, uh -huh. this is only the G seventh chord. Yes, got it? Now, let's do one more. What about F seven? F stands for F major chord. So just F major chord. another notes above it. So skip, skip, skip. And another skip E. And this point we have to find it. Is this really two half step down from the letter name? So if it's F, F here. One, oh, this one is one half step down only. We have to come one more half step down to this one. Then we need E flat, like this, to be a F seventh chord. So F seventh chord looks like this, and then we write a symbol like that. So pretty much the same way. Whenever you see just letters and the number seven means you have to come down two half step from the letter names. 
So now let's come back to part B, the left hand. C chord. So C, literally C chord. And you play words pattern. And F chord. And C chord. And G seventh. So B, and this time play an F and G. So once you know the chord, it's really easy. Now let's go from part B, both hands together. Ready? Right hand is on C, left hand is on C two. One, two, three, go. And finger number one. very important things. New chord, the seventh chord. You may have questions about major seventh and minor sevenths. What if it's minor chord and the seventh, how it's gonna be? And how do I have to figure it out? That's fine. Hold on. We're gonna learn that one soon. So just wait for that. And today you only need to remember how to find the letters with seventh on it. So seventh chord, regular seventh chord. And also in this video, we learn how to cross in the finger and how to connect the melody line between two hands. I hope you enjoyed this song and we'll see you next week. Bye.